This is a story about what happened when I finally wore carbon running shoes at a park run. For a long time I didn't wear anything other than standard foam shoes because I wanted to beat some previous personal bests without having to wonder how much the shoes had really helped me. This finally happened at the Great South Run in Portsmouth when I took down a 7 year PB. Feeling like I'd beaten the time fair and square. I promised myself that I wouldn't wear carbon shoes until I got a personal best. And knowing that I was approaching the best running shape I'd ever been in, I was willing to don a pair of Hoka Rocket X2s, a bouncy shoe designed for fast times. After running a lifetime 10k best of 37.05 in London, my attention turned back to the classic 5km distance of Parkrun. Coupled with the many miles of training and newfound fitness, how would the Rocket X2 perform on a short blast along the seafront and could I really run the fastest road 5k of my life? We'd have to wait and see. Whilst not a sponsor, if you do want to try a pair of the carbon shoes I'm wearing in this video, I've included some links in the description which can be a great way to support the growth of Jog On. Hello, Harry here. I've come today to a place that I've filmed at many times before. This is Exmouth Park Run in Devon. After much training and being a bit more confident about the running shape that I'm in, I wanted to come to Exmouth Park Run and see whether I could beat, first of all, my fastest time here, 18.51, but then also a Park Run personal best. That's it, at a time of 18.42, let's do it. Thinking I'd have a better chance of a road 5k personal best without a coat on, it came off, revealing the jog on hoodie beneath. Beginning to get the carbon shoes ready, I spotted Jogon crew members Karen and Gary arriving. Karen was keen to show off her Jogon vest. Hello, how are you? See you right? You're doing okay? You? Lacing up with cool sea winds blowing, I started my warm-up jog. People were beginning to gather as I returned from my run. It was then that I bumped into Gary Quarter, an amazing local milkman who has a passion for running and had his jog on top personalised for when he ran the Boston Marathon. The top came out as Gary and I discussed milk and I performed a few final drills. Nine to ten minute jog there. Shoes are feeling bouncy. Stepping into the gathering crowd, it felt familiar to be back at Exmouth filming once again. Even standing still in the super shoes, they felt fast. The race director climbed a pole and counted us down. Charging off the line, the sound of shoes could be heard slapping the ground below, and we quickly hit the first sharp bend. Exmouth Park Run once again, here we go. Following a man with a pram, we found ourselves on the long seafront straight. Two minutes in, bit of headwind, feeling okay. I was now gaining on the calves of steel pram man as the 35 minute pacer cruised along the path. Checking on the pram, he appeared to still have a child in it, and so I pressed on as the rain held off. The shoes felt magnificent and tapped away beneath me. We passed the lifeboat shed. I thanked a marshal and immediately felt the stiff sea breeze. Definitely a headwind, but it's bearable. Up ahead lay the turnaround, known as Orkham Point. The logo swayed, oh, God. and the early runners flew by. The infamous turn at Orkham Point, and back down. 8.54 on the watch. A couple of jog on tops in sight. Karen and Gary came past. This is a busy park run. A lot of people streaming down the path. 2.63 kilometers. I was well over halfway as some of the quicker guys rocketed back past the start area. 3.39 kilometers there. Still a fairly consistent pace. I had spied a group up ahead of me who were motoring well as a trio, but I struggled to produce the pace to get on the back of them. About to come back past that start line, 1200 meters to go. I focused on the task of tearing down that old park run personal best of 1842. Dressed like some sort of rapid black shadow, Great running, well the first runner shot towards the finish. 3.38 on that fourth kilometre. Oh, it's burning, but we're going to push. Come on. Well done, guys. Great run. A man in gloriously pink carbon shoes came down the home straight. Well done, guys. And I approached the hairpin bend. Turning point. Oh, this is fun. Oh, it's terrible on the ankles, that one. 16, 16 on the watch. Trying to drive now. Last bit of final straight. With the last effort, I clung to the pace and with running milkman Gary on the stopwatch, dived for the line. Oh, well cheers, Gary. Glancing at the watch, I saw the time flash up. Henry. How are you, right? Good, thanks. Oh, definitely a parkrun PB as well, 18.08. Slowly getting my breath back, I congratulated other parkrunners. When we turned, I thought it would be behind us. It kind of pushed me in the shoulders, but it felt like it was in the face on the way and the way back. Maybe the wind changed. Scanning my barcode, I had a chat, exhaled from the effort, and clapped other runners in. It was then that a rogue ball rolled into the path and a manic dog nearly dragged its owner over to get it. Delighted with the new time, I updated the father, who was over in New Zealand, repping orange at park runs there. After a photo with the awesome Molly, I spoke about the morning. Exmouth park run completed. A final time of 18 minutes and 8 seconds, which gives me 34 seconds off the park run PB. There's no doubt about it, those carbon shoes were very bouncy, but after lots of training, it's really finally starting to pay off. Big goal now is to break through that 18 minute barrier and get 17 colon something, which hopefully I'll get to do very soon. I'm Harry Morgan, that was Exmouth Park Run, and this is Jog On.